who is with Vinny Fiorenza? There's a lot he doesn't know. There's a lot he wants to know. This is a podcast where he tries to learn from people who know things he doesn't. He'll be focusing on people from the worlds of business, entertainment, and the arts. His guests are people he finds fascinating and that he believes will bring value to others. Join him on the journey on finding out who is. Who is Freddie Gerlando? Freddie Gerlando is one of the hardest working guys out there. And he's making some noise as an actor, a producer, and a promoter. In this episode, we get into some topics like his production company, Chicken Productions, his uh, New Jersey roots, and how it is as an actor out in L.A. So please join us in this episode of finding out who is Freddie Gerlando. Let's get this thing started. We're here with Freddie Gerlando today. We're going to learn a lot about him. Let's rock and roll. Um, so Freddie, tell the audience a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, you know, tell us everything. What's up? What's up friends? How we doing? <laughs> Looking into camera. We had a conversation if I should look into camera or not before this. But... <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, uh, I'm originally, I was born in Manhattan, uh, New York, lived there for a little bit, but I was raised in Jersey. Um, Has to mention the New York. Yeah. You got to do the New York because my whole family's from New York, the Lower East Side specifically to be exact. <laughs> I have family there, family there still. That's great. Um, but yeah, I was, I was born in New York, raised in Jersey, uh, lived there for pretty much my whole life up until six years ago where I moved out to Los Angeles. Nice. Um, okay. I got started in entertainment uh, as an actor about i'd say a decade ago did the Perfect. hustle in new yeah. york and then ended up coming out here got involved in producing and now i produce and act and we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get we'll get into all this yeah yeah we'll we'll we'll, we'll let we'll let the audience know yeah, yeah, everything yeah. All, all all the freddy isms yeah and we'll, we'll we'll get there real excited so gr growing up like uh how, how would how would someone in your class or like a friend growing up describe you like what what, what were you like in their eyes I would definitely, I, I would, <laughs> <laughs> they would say definitely I was a class clown. Nice. Um, I wouldn't I, have guessed that, honestly. No, no, dude, yeah. I would literally go into school, honestly. I wasn't the best student because I didn't apply no. myself. I no. wasn't like a bad kid or anything, but no, I definitely not. caused, I caused some commotion, just no. wanted to entertain the class. So I would actually go to school and I would be more interested in get, giving getting my friends to laugh mid class nice. which was a little bit disruptive to the teachers but yeah, i was always right. kind of a good kid it. so <laughs> so they 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 kind of dealt with it in yeah. a way um but they would say i was i was class clown didn't take myself too seriously um but uh so overall, it makes yeah. sense, it makes sense that you're an actor and you're yeah. on screen and the, 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 did you ever like get involved in anything like that as a kid were you yeah. on stage like young yeah yeah oh I, you were yeah, I, I was actually. Um, I don't even know if we even talked about this. No, not really. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So I actually, I got, I got, I, I was doing plays all throughout my life, honestly. Um, I, uh, I, was in, I was in one. Yeah, what, what was it? <laughs> Footloose. Oh yeah, nice, nice. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. T tell me more. Tell me about your yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your no, experience. so I, I started doing plays in kindergarten, um, and then I, I, I did them in middle school. And honestly, at the time when I was doing it, I didn't. I didn't know I wanted to be an actor. I didn't know oh, yeah. that was going to be the path. I just really enjoyed performing. Oh, yeah. And specifically, actually, I'll share this one memory Please. that I think really stands out to me. I was in fourth grade, and it wasn't even acting. I, I actually took drum lessons. I was, okay. I was drumming for a little bit. You know, fourth mm -hmm. grade, um, Mr. Sasso was my music teacher. Sasso. And uh, we did, at the talent show for the school, um, we we did a instrumental version of Strangers in the Night by Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so I was playing figures, drums. Right? <laughs> yeah, I was playing drums and um, a buddy at the time was playing sax. So it was just him on sax, me on drums, Strangers in the Night. And I remember, and the audit, auditorium was packed out. Like it was like yeah. deep. I don't even remember or recall uh, another performance I've ever I even done on stage doing theater that mm. was as packed out as that auditorium was. That's great. It man. was that it was, young too. It made a huge impact. I'm um I always go back to that. And after just that moment, I started doing more plays because I just love to perform. And and again, being you know being a kid, I didn't know 
that was going to be my path in the future. I just enjoy doing it. Yeah. You know? No, that's that's fantastic. Um, I, I'm, ha- I'm happy you understood that that young. What, what about, like, uh, your family growing up? Did they have anything to do with, like, you becoming a creative? Obviously, you did that young, but, like, what did your fa- anything in your family impact that? Honestly, with cre- creativity, being an artist, an actor, all of that stuff, um, nobody in my family was no. in the business of entertainment at all. But I had a lot of influences from my father. He used to take me to movies when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm talking about... I was in the theater watching Forrest Gump, and I might have been like nine or ten years old. But that's how me yeah. and my dad actually connected a, a lot when we were when I was a kid. Oh, that's great, dude. Because same, he, same actually. Because yeah, he would always work; he'd be out making yeah. money for the family. But the time he we did have, we'd go to the theaters. He would that's take me great, to the movie dude. theaters a lot. Um, he also showed me a lot of really great films when I was younger, <laughs> like Goodfellas, Casino. Uh-huh. When I was like nine or ten years old. Yeah, same and, and dude. Me watching being, Misery as an eight year old. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And me being me being a dad, and we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't show. And I haven't, and I didn't show my kid <laughs> Goodfellas at like nine or ten years yeah, old. No, but my dad, that's just the way that we connected. So he really influenced me. And then even my grandfather, too. Um, I would, you know, when we moved to Jersey, we would always be in and out of New York City because all of our family still lived there in the Lower yeah. East Side. So I would spend summers in the city. I would spend months at a time during the summers uh, in between school in the city, I'd stay with my grandparents, my cousins and yeah. my grandfather. He used to have, remember that black box when we were younger, there was like that, the ca- it was a cable box. Oh, that, like a hot box. Like, like, a, like it was like a black cable box and you would order uh pay-per-view through the cable box, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So, he, but he used to, like the illegal did, ones, like a hot box. So yeah, he never course. used to have to pay for cable. Yeah. So he used to record the VHS tapes on exactly. the yeah, so bro, we record, did the same thing. So my grandfather know? was another huge influence for me. Just just yeah, yeah. loving movies in general and I think really getting me into Get an, HBO an, on the HBO. <laughs> all the pay per views with the movies yeah. didn't have to pay. So I would and they would rerun all the time. Of course. They would just rerun and run. So I was watching a ton of films like A League of Their Own and um, even like kid films because I was still super young. Um, you know, 9, 10, 11, 4th, 5th, 6th grade, Dennis the Menace, all these little that's ones. But great, then there yeah. were also films that were dramas that were replaying. And I would, that's what I would do. I literally would, I'd be outside, would play with my cousins on the streets. But then at night, or and even right. in the morning, I'd rewatch the films. And I would spend the weeks I would uh, I was there rewatching films. And, and I still do that to this day. And it started right. there. Um, like rewatch films ridiculously. Yeah. Like my cousin Scott that you know. Yeah. He he probably thinks I'm annoying because I, I was. <laughs> I, I think I, you're annoying. I, I, had, I had a <laughs> I had a streak where I watched Rudy last year, like once a weekend for like three months at a time. Oh. So he'd hear the score come out of my room, like the music in the beginning of the That's film, so and he te- and he tells now my friends, you know, our friends make oh, fun yeah. of me. Hey, w- w- would you watch Rudy. this weekend, Rudy? Because R- Rudy, Rudy, that was the thing. But um, yeah, my grandfather. My dad influenced me in, in loving movies, yeah. but as far as being an artist and an actor, there was no one in my family that went into entertainment. So um, getting well, involved was, was pretty foreign to us because you know what the deal is coming from the area we came, East yeah. Coast, New York, or Jersey, um, you know, blue collar town. A lot of um, my friends or a lot of people in town would mostly go into a field that their family, that their family was in, so, w- which was all good. Um, but I was kind of like the only artist in the family, so I kind of had to figure it out, you know. Would Would you say Would you say that being from the East Coast does that impact you as an artist out here? Like, does that have an effect? Yeah. In any way? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think just I think just the way that I grew up, honestly, yeah. and the people I grew up around. I feel you. You know, I'm I'm in, I'm in the same exact boat. And, couldn't really agree a whole lot more on that. That, yeah. that makes a, a lot of like sense. hard workers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, good, I grew up blue collar everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you know, like blue, you know, good moral values, ethics, um, just working hard, being a good person. A lot of, a lot of, you know, family, family folk. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, um, family that, means everything to me. You I don't know? know if that's something people on the East Coast might say. <laughs> family. Folk. Yeah, no, <laughs> but no, no. I, I picked up a couple of isms when I came yeah, out. You yeah, talk about I that. love the Freddy isms. Um, but yeah, man, it, oh. being from the East Coast definitely uh, t- 
taught me a lot and I'm definitely grateful for the upbringing. Well, we met, we met out here and I'm really happy to have met you and like be working with you in some type of ways. Like Same when did bike. you, yeah, man, what's cool. When, when did you make the trek out to LA and like, obviously I know like acting led you here, but like, what, like, tell me a little bit about that journey. Like when you got here and like, you know, what, uh, what, what you know, push you out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I came out here six years ago, like nice. I mentioned. Um, but I originally first got introduced to LA, I'd say about a decade ago. Nice. Um, I was hustling in New York as an actor, auditioning and whatnot. Wow. But once I started, you know, getting involved and getting going, like in the industry and doing theater in New York and take you know taking classes and training and doing all that stuff and auditioning, I I had this. It was always a uh, a vision, an intuition, or like an inner vision. You yeah, know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that, I followed that. I had to come out to LA, see what what it was about. So I ended up coming out about when I was in my early 20s. I stood out here for a month, just to kind of get settled in. I took a bunch of like cast and director workshops, um, just to see how I was being received. Also, of from the industry out here, as opposed to in New York, and to see if I had anything. You know, because. Not growing up around, like we talked about family, not growing up around artists, um, I, I didn't really have anyone to share what I was yeah. doing as an actor and get feedback, like honest feedback, like you got it or you don't got it, kid. You know, um, a lot of people just thought I was crazy around my town just for being an actor and just wanting to I do it, it because it's pretty much, it's, it's pretty insane to go into a business that has no uh, guarantee that, that there's going to be work. Um, but then once, you know, I, I started in New York, I came out to LA to feel the waters out. And then after that trip, initially for that month, I yeah. knew in my head, I got to get out here. Um, and it took me like four, it took me like four or five years, but oh, pull that trigger to pull the trigger and kind of yeah. get situated. And, and honestly, when I came out here, a lot of things moved out of my life and into my life to make that move a little bit more, um, easier of a transition for me. Um, but that, that was really it. Just the initial, uh, once I came out here and knew I wanted to be out here because I, yeah. within that month, you could see how you're able to navigate in this town, how you can meet people, connect with people, how, how that can lead to opportunities. Of course, and then man, you also, gotta be able to use that. Yeah. And also what uh, some people say, and I got this a lot when I first came out here, from people that are not in this town in general and also people that are in the industry in different markets on how LA is. And a lot of people would, would tell me or ask me, Hey, isn't that a lot of competition out there for you? Yeah. Now it, it's all how you perceive things. It's in, just course. in general, I think in life, but especially when you're going your day to day throughout the industry. And for me, when I first came out here, I was really, uh, I really enjoyed being able to connect with people that loved what we do. Of course. Because everybody man. in this town is doing something and they came from wherever the hell they came from to be in the town and they literally just yeah. want to go after it and love it. So to be able to connect with people that I could have conversations with at the cleaners about yeah, literally, film. Well, literally. yeah. I like, mean, every, everyone here is an actor. <laughs> like you can't, actor, oh, yeah, producer, whatever it is. Writer, yeah. or whatever the case, aspiring to be or around it. So to be have those, to be able to have those conversations and, and connections, um, you know, not just making the connection of whatever that person will do for you, whatever, but I'm talking about being able to connect human to human on something of that we're course. passionate about. That's what got me excited. So I, I tell folks, it's like, nah, well, it's how you look at it because being able to be out here and connect with folks is like, keeps me motivated, grounded, and like uplifted in a way that we're all out here trying to get after it and, and make it all happen. And you yeah, know? that's, yeah, I, I feel the same exact way, man. We connect, connecting with people on that type of that's level. That's how we connected. Like, exactly. And we, yeah. and, you know, we'll, we're from the we'll same get there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get to that. <laughs> but I wanted to ask you, uh, as an actor out here, um, are there are there any specific actors you could think of off the top of your head that like have in, inspired you? Like you could name more than one, but like, you know, hey, let, me, let me know. Let's hear it. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. The list is deep. The list is deep. Um, but... I mean, of course, Leonardo DiCaprio. It's a popular you know, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but honestly, though, but, but, but honestly, I know a lot of actors like Leo. I mean, Pacino, De Niro, right? I can name everyone. Yeah. And, and they've got influenced by Brando. Um, and they talk about his work. Me growing up, 
going to see Titanic in the movie theater yeah. and, and being able, because I was also, I was a pretty sensitive kid growing up. You know, mm. I was pretty in touch with my feelings and being able to go to a theater and then Leo being able to be vulnerable on screen and see someone that at the time was larger than life, especially after the success that came after that film for oh him. Oh my God, yeah. From the performance he gave that he was super vulnerable, it, 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 I, I connected with him and that. And then of course it's like, all right, Leo's hot, he's out there, but also that was a connection to see to see that on screen for me that really it, stays with me to, to this day and then of course you know um al pacino robert de niro um all, 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 all the all the but, new york but, but I wanna, but also, i'm the, sure there's a million like, of them. like even even now um more you know recent actors that have been doing it and have been getting some yeah. spotlight like, and much deserved like i love john bernthal oh, yeah, um, of course man. bernthal uh I, I you know he just seems like a solid dude he's a family guy yeah, he's all over the but place he, but he's you know he's he's a, he's a tough dude that does great work and um i mean margot robbie too she's great yeah. you know she's super talented Phenomenal. and she's a producing beast you know yeah. you know what i mean and so that's what, there's a lot of women in this town that yeah are, yeah that, um charlie Theron, yeah. kate winslet uh, um, Reese Witherspoon. But, Reese Witherspoon. But, uh, yeah, what's called? I also yeah. you're you're like me. You're you're a little nuts. Like you like going over the top. You like meeting people. You like going yeah. out there. Like I met you at events and some events that you threw. Like uh, how do you? <laughs> yeah. Like how do you go about making these connections? And after that, what like what advice do you give on networking? So, great question. So it's it's pretty much an, an advice on how to be nuts. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Just yeah, get yeah. out there and just go like, you know, crazy to the wall. You know, for me, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, comes, for you, yeah. For me, it comes easier and natural, I guess you could say, just because I like con connecting with people. And I only say that because you definitely do because people that we know they tell me, hey, it comes easier and natural for you, Fred. You know. Um, I literally just love connecting with people. Yeah. So when I go out, uh, I have a, a I have a shit ton of can I curse on here? Yeah, bro. Oh, okay. okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I have a shit ton of energy anyway. So like when I'm out, I'm, I'm I I, I want to meet as many people as possible because I love connecting dots. I love helping people where I can because I believe it comes back and I believe that's all what we should do for each other. You know what I'm saying? Because we all have our individual journeys and it's only going to be beneficial to everybody yeah. if we just come together and work hard and and, and help each other out um but sign now, off on that too like that's literally you yeah <laughs> you know, I appreciate for that, sure. bro. thank you man um just being authentic you know just going out being yourself not look at it as networking just yeah look at it. of like, course like literally look at it as like you're going out you're having a good time and if you if you connect with anyone just no. like a uh you know you're at the the, the bar or you're in freaking trader joe's or whatever there you go. and you know the the person gives i mean just giving someone a compliment just being a yeah. good human being can translate into a conversation you never know hey, like you have a nice what? jacket yeah a nice jacket yeah <laughs> what's up bud nice nice you're in the frozen food section at trader joe's yeah. oh you're getting the chicken tonight awesome yeah i'm about to hit that <laughs> by the way Great, yeah, great, great cardigan, but I have the same. I have actually, yeah. Where? Oh, yeah. So, but, but, but doing it genu genuine, genuinely. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Course, Being authentic. Man. Like yeah. I never go out and like I look like. All right, who am I gonna talk yeah, to tonight? No. Let's see what opportunities are I'm out there. You. But just being, just being present, enjoying. Yeah the night you know what i'm saying the beautiful thing that we get to do is we moved out here and on a tuesday night what you know on a thursday yeah, your thursday we could, do, we could be <laughs> we could be wherever in this town and meet anybody and yeah. that could lead to something so just true. just just being yourself and enjoying the connection and then that's it it's like don't look at it as networking just look at it as connecting with another individual so like you're always on how, how do you do that? Like, to, to, how do you stay like that? Like it, like I, I've, it's hard to tell. Uh, I, well, I've never seen you like let your hair down. Let's I put it you. that way, which I, I like. <laughs> like let me I ask love you a that. question. Out of uh, given a percentage of how much of a percent I'm usually on, what would you say? 
Because I like to know how people perceive me sometimes. Oh, you're on, you're on, man. Yeah, like whatever, like the Freddy, like, yeah, you're on, dude. You know, like almost all the time. Percentage, I don't know. Nah, but so I, like, the only reason I 85, asked, 90, like, you know, like I, I know you differently than a lot of people out there. But like, I think it's very inspiring that you're always on. I appreciate like, that, it's, man. It's Thank cool, you. man. It's fun to be around. So to answer your question, and I, the only reason I ask that is not to like blow smoke up my own ass, but yeah. really... Um, I remember I was working in a restaurant a few years ago and I, I, I guess I was on during that yeah, yeah. time too, because a lot of people will come in, especially this one cus customer, great dude. And he's like, yo, you're always on, man. You're always That's in a great. good spirit. You know, you're just slanging these pies out, blah, blah, blah. And, and honestly, I, I don't know. I, 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 well, you I have really, that innate thing I, too. And I get that. Whatever it is. My answer to that is my mother. Oh, because wow. she, right, if you, 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 you will meet my mother, you <laughs> will. Right. Looking forward to um, it. <laughs> and she's always been an, an abundant, light, energetic, nice, angelic man. type individual who I love very dearly. Shout out mom. I'll look into the camera for that. <laughs> we'll clip that, send it to her. Um, <laughs> Perfect. She'll love it. <laughs> um, that up. But not nah, honestly, man, she always had this energy, infectious personality. I definitely inherited that from to her, but... I don't look at it as being on. This is just, I have yeah. a lot of energy. This is, I've always been like this. Even in high school, middle school, I always had energy. Um, I had trouble at, when I was younger sitting still in class and, yeah. and they thought I had ADHD or whatever, but then they just realized, oh, he's just an energetic child that just likes to bounce around yeah, a lot. Thank God you were. And talks, <laughs> talks a shit ton too. I really enjoy and get excited by just interacting with people. And honestly, the day in and day out, being out here is exciting, it's inspiring, and it's an adventure every day. Just being out in Los Angeles, living a dream of mine is an exciting thing. And I really look up, look at, I just look at it like that. And yeah, that's what I wake up on the, you know, what I wake up to the morning with is, um, you know, what am I gonna get into today? Uh, I got all this energy, I'm, I'm excited, I'm inspired. Let's see what could um, transpire, you know? And that's, uh that's like I, I know I met your 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 mixers like what what are uh you, you actually we even hosted an event together a few months back we had a, we had a lot of fun met yeah. a lot of people got a lot of people out there and what do these events like uh, teach you like when when you when you host them like because uh, uh, he does he does creative mixers they're they're pretty great and he's I don't know that, that that thousands at this point the amount of people that went in and out of the door at your events like what has that taught you over the past few years. That's a great question. Folks will say, hey, dope party, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, how'd you get into it, right? Yeah. But it's like, what has it taught me, right? So it affirms to me how much I love bringing people together and connecting people, you know? Yeah. Um, and and just making it happen for people. Some people, when they come and just, uh, I'll, I'll do a little detour and I'll get back on track. I like to do that. I started it four years ago, every Thursday, every Thursday at a spot break room 86 in Koreatown, Los That's Angeles. Great. I'm still doing it every Thursday if anyone wants to pop in on a Thursday night. I started it four years ago and I did it, every, I've been doing it every Thursday since then. Yeah, I've been there. It's Minus great. the pandemic, of course, but then yeah. I, I actually took it online on Zoom every Thursday wow. and I br brought on an industry guest every week for community. Um, I never told you that, but yeah. that's how I met a lot of my producing partners. I wasn't partners. even in the industry at that point. No, nah, yeah, no, but that's how I met a lot of my producing partners now yeah. throughout the pandemic, wow, doing man. that too specifically. We'll, we'll get to that too because we'll I got to ask you. Um, but the industry party, what, it, what it's taught me and what I do is really just um, how much I really love meeting people, yeah. bringing people together, hosting and curating a vibe and energy, and introducing people to, to one another, connecting dots. Um, it sounds like it led you to the... the like production side of things and yeah. i know like i i just recently saw you uh i didn't see the film yet but you acted in the movie replica is that out replica yet? yeah it's not out yet we're okay looking, cool, we're, cool. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be though so yeah tell, tell me about tell me about, uh, just quickly about the film and like how your experience was and uh yeah yeah, tell me about the yeah no no it, it, it was a great it was a great process. You know, the experience was great. Um, you were a producer I, and an actor. I was right? a producer and an actor on Perfect. it. Yeah, that's actually my first feature I produced. Fantastic. So I got Congrats. into that. Thank you, buddy. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And honestly, that came from, the opportunity came from 
just and I still do to this day, just creating with my friends. Yeah, man. And just boiling it down and just creating yeah, with my friends. That's what we're doing right now. That's what we're doing right now. We're creating <laughs> this, right? Uh-huh. Um, so being able to create with my friends, short films. And we that's under your production company, right? Yes, I have a production company. I have Chicken Productions. Yeah, that's that's my production company where the focus is narrative, feature, and shorts. Cool. And also branches a little bit into the events like the industry parties yeah, like yeah. Thursday. Where we collaborate yeah. and also a little bit of marketing. And then I, I also have I'm a part and co founder of Crimson Moon Cinema with Manny, my buddy oh, yeah, Manny yeah, yeah, McCord, know, man. Josh tip. Earhart. We're partners um, and we're churning out content, narrative, commercials, nice. docs, um, focusing more on narrative this year. We already have two in the can in post production. From last year, that's going to come out this year in the festival circuit, and then um, we have a feature. Can't, can't stop you. Yeah, no, we have a feature <laughs> yeah. that we're working on also. Manny's writing it right now, but that's oh, going to go fantastic. this year. We have another feature that's on. So it's a good amount of things, but um, that experience will replica the feature. Yeah. The, the reason I got that opportunity um, was because I was creating with my friends. I was able to network a little bit, meet huh. people through creating, and it led me to producing that film as well as acting in it. Um, it's a great film with a great message. Um, we're proud of it, and yeah, man. Overall, yeah. it was a great experience. Right. I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm really buddy. looking forward to it, and I'm proud of you. And I thank can't you. wait. Maybe we got a project in the future together. Let's go. And um, speaking into existence. Yeah, right. right let's now. do it. So, chicken. What's up with the name? Tell me, what does that mean? <laughs> Where'd it come from? Who, Love it. Who let's go. That chicken. So, that was an inside joke between my family which turned into the production company nice. chicken so i have two younger brothers um jack's the middle one and rocco's the younger one mm. so when rocco was like seven or eight years old he would pronounce his ch's chicken sh- sh- checkers chocolate with the sh that's great so chicken chocolate checkers and when that when he was in that phase and I love my brothers and we have a great relationship and I'm very lucky to have brothers that we, we have such a good relationship with and that love, you know what I mean? It it means a lot. Um, but when he was, when he was younger, I used to, uh, that was his nickname, chicken. So I just, I used to call him chicken, 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 chicken. chicken. And then once I got into just acting before I even got into producing, I, I, I told my family at the dinner table, at the dinner table, I was like, when I have my production company one day, we're going to call it Chicken Productions. That's great. And Here then, you are. <laughs> and then it was it was an ongoing like joke and a gag, but then it became, I put it on my vision board too. Um, I made a vision board before I moved out here and it, right at the top was Chicken Productions. And yeah, we launched Chicken Productions in 2020 during the pandemic Wow. because... I had to, I haven't really talked about this at all in general, but let me just tell folks how easy (laughs) it is to get, well, how quick it is to get an LLC and turn it around. Uh, Because a lot of folks don't know, how do you get an LLC? How did you start Uh, your company? Like, I didn't know it. I have like six of them. (laughs) Right, you have a six of them. So I literally called a company up to start an LLC. You pay a little bit of a fee, like a few hundred or whatever the case may be. You get your EIN number and you have a production company. It's what you you're do. A C- with, you're a CEO. You're a CEO, right? <laughs> but it's what you do with the production company and with the, you know, with that. Man. So I was actually, I had the opportunity during the pandemic, December 2020, I think, was to be a marketing partner with the Daytime Emmys, the there National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, mm, beautiful. in collaboration with the Michio Film Festival, which is another um, uh, festival I'm on the board of currently. We, we, we could get to that, yeah, but yeah, we're going cool. into our fifth uh, film festival this July. I'm on the board of that festival. And that um, opportunity came through Michio, through daytime. And, you know, my buddy Noel, shout out Noel Braham. He's a super great guy, great. Emmy nominated filmmaker, great human being. And he hit me up and was like, Yo, man, I see all everything you're doing with marketing and everything you're doing um, right now. Would you want to partner with us and, and get get on this? Because we're doing an event to 
let people know the whole intention of the event was how an independent filmmaker could submit their, their project to the Emmys. Because oh a lot God. of people, oh, that a great right? program, right? Because a lot of people in general, especially independent artists, they may or may not know how to submit their projects to the Emmys. I know I didn't before that whole, that, that, um, that, uh, that event that we did. Yeah. I, I thought like you had to get selected or someone had to yeah. come like tap you on the shoulder, but it was just, it's just an application process, honestly. So when he hit me like to- Like your LLC. Like the LLC. <laughs> so when he was like, yo, come uh, partner up with us. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't have an LLC. Let me get one. So I turned around the LLC within like 48 hours. I hit my buddy up with graphic designing. We, I came up with the whole- uh, a Bing, little mini bang, trailer, uh -huh. um, the aesthetic of my production company, uh -huh. the gold and the black, and everything like that. That's how it started, and you know w we started off with the daytime. Um, I also worked a little bit with Lee Aronson, who co-created Two and a Half Men, the oh, show wow. with Chuck Lorre, okay. yeah, um, yeah, yeah. marketing and helping with his company, The Creators Writing Room, and my buddy Jason Kyle, who is the other co-founder of that company. Shout out Jason because he created a great opportunity for me at that time. And then the it snowballed into doing a narrative work with chicken and the we shot a doc mock series 15 minute episodes six episodes during the pandemic under that was the first chicken project uh, a mockumentary called content is king um which was a great project yeah. that ran the festival circuit won some awards and now we're actually oh, congrats, it's thank you bro and now this is just recent i can't speak too much about it but it's it might still be going that oh, might second life second life there second, we go we life. love that we just had that conversation recently um and that was it man it was just i had to get an llc i made an llc chicken production and then it took on a life of its own and we're producing and i'm very 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 grateful for um, everything that's been happening so hearing all these things that you got going on more on the personal side what are you doing in downtime the little that you do have <laughs> the, uh, well I I do have I have a one day a week my yeah, Sunday I have to respect that I have my one day a week <laughs> on Sunday where I turn off I unplug Love that. Um, granted if I have to if I have to yeah. work on a Sunday if we have to go to set or there's something that's like dire or whatever mm -hmm. granted yeah I'll be there for sure you know I'm oh, not yeah. gonna like turn yeah. down an opportunity you know me or whatever the case but uh, um, and a mentor told me this, a really good friend of mine, and I'll shout out Jules Bruff, who I did Death of a Salesman with. We produced That's and great. acted in Death of a Salesman in 2019 out here in LA. That's another great story. We'll do it on the next yeah, episode. Yeah, next one. Um, <laughs> that was the whole thing. That was great, though. The best, One of the best experiences, if not the best experience of my career as an actor and also producing as well. But um, I, I remember I was burning out a lot when I first came yeah. out of here. Not because I was partying and all this stuff, like literally because... I was going nonstop every day working, yep. just like meeting or, or whatever. Like I had just, I had to keep working and I used to get like colds every two, three months. I used to burn out and I used to take three days off and then come back and do the same thing again, you know, same shit. And it wasn't until she told me that you gotta give yourself a day or two half days to be by yourself. So once I implemented that, that one day a week off, I turn my phone on airplane mode. Get out I of here. Yeah, wow. I, tur Good I turn for my, you. my and Manny. <laughs> you could talk to Manny and my friends. They know that they can't get a hold of me. No matter oh, I've what. Dealt, I've dealt right. with that already. Right? So it's like because <laughs> Sundays it's like I'm, it's just me. You know, it's my time with with with, with the big man upstairs also specifically. Oh, nice. And it's my time. I drink a gallon of water. Um, Pedialyte too is great, not only for like hangovers, but really yeah. for just exhaustion. Cause I, you know, I work out a lot during the week, so I'll make sure I get my electrolytes wow. replenished or whatnot. So a gallon of water, Pedialyte, and I watch a bunch of movies to like fill the cup. And alongside of that though, the daily, I have the daily routine of I meditate in the morning and I meditate at night nice. and I, I, I pray and meditate in the morning. I pray and meditate at night Love every that, single day. Yeah, and routines, that, everything, you know, it changed that I've been doing that practice consistently for almost 10 years in the morning. And then I implemented the night once the pandemic hit nice. and I've been on that wave and it's, for me personally, just for myself, because I also doing everything to be real, I have to keep my mental health in check. Of course. Because in my early 20s, when I didn't know what anxiety was and how to deal with it, because not a lot of people in my family dealt with that, yeah. I had to figure that out on my own. And meditation was a tool I implemented every single day that 
gave me a better understanding of myself to help me manage my anxiety. So I've been on that wave for since then, for the past decade, it's been tremendous. And the amount of the quality of life that it's, that, that, that it's provided, given to me, yeah. just meditating and using that tool, how, how uh, much better I am, more present I am, more, you know, fully functioning, being able to function on an optimal level every single yeah. day and be dialed. I attribute that to my one day a week I take off Sunday and every single day meditation and prayer for sure. Nice, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I should take notes from you, but, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. I'll, I'll figure yeah. that out at some point, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some quicker questions now. Yeah. Okay. Getting, getting close to closing out. All right. So quick answers, quick questions. Yep. Well, both. Boom. Fire shot. Okay. All right. So when you think about it, what's your favorite meal? Pizza. Oh, easy. Beautiful. Yeah. With any specialty, you know? Um, I like Prince Street Pizza in Los Angeles. There you go. The square pepperoni Perfect. and the square vodka pie. You well, like, square, you square like square Sicilian. Vodka slice. Yeah, yeah. Mountains or beach? Beach. Nice. Ah, uh, it's tough though, cause I I run running a lot. You know, I love I love the mountains. Uh, I love, love nature. All right, yeah, yeah. so you like both. We'll, a little we'll, bit we'll, of both. I'm a beach guy. I'll, I'll vote for you. I'm in the all middle. Right. I'm in the nice. middle. Fa favorite favorite TV show? You go all time or like on yeah, right now? Yeah, let's go all time. Oh, this should be an easy one. Huh? You know, it's it's biased, <laughs> but Sopranos <laughs> being Italian, but uh, the Wire. Jersey. Okay, cool. The, the Wire is incredible. Ozark is incredible. Recently, um, a lot of great TV out. Nice. I I mean Succession. Yeah. You, like yeah, that's a, Breaking uh, incredible. Bad. We go all day. There's a lot the of Game mold. Changers, <laughs> Mad Men. Uh, what about what's called? I know I know you're not uh, like a biggest sport guy, but what what's if you had a root for your your team? What's your team? Dallas Cowboys. There we go. Wow, okay. that was a curveball for me. Well, we gotta that. get we gotta get one. Yeah. I think I think we'll get one bowl. Like I, I started liking them in '95, '96 when they won, and I was like eight or nine. Yeah. I forgot how I was young. But my dad never had a football team, being from the East Coast, so I had to figure it out. I was the firstborn son. They won. I also saw Little Giants at the time when the oh, Cowboys but, were the cool team, whatever. Yeah, three little. So pigs. I got hypnotized. But that's my team, man. Ride or die, and I'm hoping we get one bowl. That, that yeah, I can, hopefully during your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. We'll get one. I know yeah, we'll get one. But, uh, we'll get one soon too. So last one, uh, if you could have dinner with a historical figure, who would it be? Uh, it's very tough. Sam Cook. Okay. Cool. We appreciate that. And uh, lastly, um, you know, I had I had a really good time. I'm really excited for the audience to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks, buddy. And, Thanks uh, for having me, man. I appreciate I, it. I, I hope that uh, um, you know they could learn a little bit more from this and see where they could. Uh, I don't know how could they how could they find you if you want to connect with more people. How could they connect with you? Yeah, you can reach me at Freddie Girlando on Instagram. Perfect. Um, I'm also Go follow this guy. Yeah, at Freddie Girlando on Instagram. I'm also on the board of Amicio Film Festival. Check there us we out. We're running July 10th to the 17th of this year. Go to Amicio Film Fest at Amicio Film Fest. Um, and yeah, follow cool. me. Follow the journey. I'm always down to meet everybody, man. You know, anyone that's in the industry huh. that has passion and. I'm down to meet people, connect with people, see where the synergy always. I mean, you know that. And then also, if you're in town Thursday nights, I'm throwing the party. <laughs> I'll continue to throw the party no matter where we go and elevate. I love it. The parties will always be there. Come out and meet Freddie in person it's, Thursday it's, nights. So Thursday nights, yeah. But yeah, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll be there. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, come through. Yeah. But yeah, what's cool is great, man. Thank, thanks for coming out. And uh, well, I'll be seeing you soon. And uh, I'm excited to get this out there. Thank Brother, you. thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I wish you the best with this podcast. It means a lot that you've asked me to be on. So thank you. All right. Well, thank you. All uh right. -huh.